Hey guys, it's your friendly neighborhood war hipster here, bringing another Necron Indomitus 2 painting tutorial for your television screens. Today we're going to be painting the Scorpec Destroyer Lord. I've been looking forward to doing this one because he's enormous and, well, I think he's going to look really cool in the color scheme that we've been doing. So, as per usual, whenever starting painting our Zarakan Necrons, we're going to start by painting in the black. And there's two different types of black. There's the industrial black and there's the clean black. And we're going to start with the clean black. Now, the color we used before we do the black templar is pterodon turquoise. And this is to give us our pre-shade as well as establish our first edge highlight. And what we want to do is we want to use this color on all of the clean black areas. Now, this is areas like the gun casing up here, his soft spinal column, which is usually located in kind of like down around here, which you can see. Uh, we need also want to count in the kind of areas on the on the big blade uh, and any other areas that you want to be this kind of soft, smooth black. And what you want to do, as you can see that I'm doing here, is you just want to kind of paint quite methodically. We want a good even coverage of this pterodon turquoise all over the areas that we want to be this color like this, just always kind of trying to paint in the same direction whenever we encounter a section. So like these up and down sections, we're just going up and down rather than side to side. Just follow what the model is basically kind of trying to tell you, like the grain of the wood. And with all that pterodon turquoise applied, we're now gonna thin down some iron warriors on our palette and we're gonna paint in all of the silver, but also all of the industrial black details. Now the industrial black details are areas that are like the joints, like here, in his arms and in his legs. We just want to get this Iron Warriors all over like this. Just really fit up that joint, like that. Whereas all the silver details are, well, all the details that you want to be silver. So these are areas like the, the mechanical workings here on the gun. This top area up here on his, you know, his actual spinal column, the large shoulder pads, his neck in there. There's a lot of silver details. If you need help, just have a look at any of the box art or the product photography on the Games Workshop website. And with all that Iron Warriors applied, it's now time to add the Black Templar. So we're going to do this in two different ways. First. For all that industrial black, what we want to do is we just want to take a bit of black templar on our brush and then on, for example, down here on the joint, once again, we just want to coat this black templar all over these sections. Like this. Just want to get a good coat of it all over, giving us a really dark industrial metal feel. Gonna finish off the section. As it's always important with contrast to just do the whole bit when you start it, because otherwise you get those kind of drying lines and streaks, which is the things that you don't want. There you go. That's that whole bit. Additionally, for all of the uh, pterodon turquoise area, what we want to do is we want to take a small amount of black templar on our brush, like this. And I'm going to do it right here on the hand. And what we want to do is we want to basically, it's a little too much, we just want to paint this Black Templar all over the flat of the panel, just avoiding the edge. Like that. And that way it establishes our first highlight. Same again on the other side. Just come up to the edge and stop, just like that. As you can see, we've got our first edge highlight already established and it looks great. And with all that black Templar applied, it's now time to do the bronze. So the color that we're gonna use first is Rune Lord Brass. And we wanna paint this over, well, all of the remaining armor plates, his legs, his arms, his chest, 
his weird crotch thing. I want to get this all over all of them. Don't worry too much about doing shading and highlights yet on that silver and that black. We'll do it all together once we've got the kind of the bronze and a little bit more of the silver ready. And with all that Rune Lord brass applied, you can see the model's taken a massive leap forward. It's actually, it's such a lovely color scheme. So what we're gonna do next is just gonna brighten up this Rune Lord brass in a few areas by using some thin down Sycorax bronze. And what we wanna do is we basically just wanna use the Sycorax bronze like this, just on kind of the outside panels of, of, of the armor. We don't wanna put it all over the armor because we want like a couple of different tones in there when we finally put the shade on. We also kind of want to avoid any kind of recessed details. So like any battle damage or any kind of deep curves, we just want to ignore that stuff. So like in there, just here, we're not going to add the Sycorax bronze, but on the front of the leg, we absolutely are. Same along here on this part of the leg. We just want to put it along the top like this and a little bit down the side. Same again on the inside like that. And then along here, we just want to add some of this Sycorax bronze like this to the front and along here at the bottom. This is basically just to give us, as I say, some variation in the shade, but also just to make it really shiny. So we want to just go around like this, doing it all over these bronze details. And with that Sycorax bronze all applied you can see we've got these different tones in the armor it just it, it just elevates it slightly now what we're going to do is just before we do any of the shading is we're going to thin down some iron hand steel and we're going to do a similar thing to what we've just done with the sycorax bronze what we're going to do is we're going to use this iron hand steel on the sharp parts of the claw so like that, the inside edge, basically, of each of the blades, we want to leave that. Ooh, nope, that's the pot. We don't want that. Now uh, we want to just want to do the, the, like I said, the inside edge of each of the blades. Not the top half, just this bit here. And this so that it just looks extra sharp once we put the shading on. We also get a different kind of, two different silvers going on, similarly. On the thumb, I want to do that bit there, like that. I want to do the same thing on both sides. In addition, what we want to do is we want to use this iron hand steel to add a layer to the shoulder pads. So we want to make contact up here. And we just want to really brighten up that silver. But what we want to do is we want to leave any of the recesses as well as a gap in the iron warriors and the iron hand steel in that concave like that. You just want to avoid adding any of this iron hand steel to any of that battle damage as well. So we get these, again, two different silvers interacting on the shoulder pad. And with all of that iron hand steel applied to those shoulder pads and to the blades, we're now gonna add some shades to the miniature. Now the first place we're gonna start is with all the bronze. And the color we're going to use is a mixture of six parts contrast medium, one part agarost dunes, and one part wildwood. And what we want to do is we just want to slap this mixture all over all of that bronze. Like this. In addition, we want to use this same mixture to shade the shoulder pads. And what we're going to do is we're going to use a small amount of it. And we're just going to fill in all of the recesses like this. Same for this one here. Like that. 
and like that. And we're also going to draw over that Iron Warriors and draw a nice big long line of it. And then we're just going to smooth it out with our brush by just kind of dabbing away. In that, in that recess like that, to give it that impression that it's all dirty. And then we're also gonna just add the odd little stipple of it here and there, just to really make it look like the muck has built up in there over the years. And with that contrast medium, Agaros dunes and wildwood mix applied, you can see now we've got this lovely, gorgeous, weathered bronze armor look now before we do any highlights on that we are just going to add the uh, the next shade and that is going to be some basilicanum gray and this is for all the remaining silver sections so areas like this cable we want to get this basilicanum gray all over make sure you work it right into that recess like that and we just want to as i say there's nothing special here. We're just getting this basilicanum gray all over. Don't use loads because you don't want to overwhelm it. You just want to darken it down a little bit and get some sh shadows in that in those recesses like this. And with those shades applied, we're now ready to add some highlights to the miniature. Now, the first thing we're going to do is before we do any edge highlighting, we actually just want to tackle this central piece here. Now, whenever you look at any of the box art for this. You can see, for example, here on the instructions, I don't know how clear it will be, but when you look at his uh, central tabard thing, it's a slightly different color to the rest of the miniature, but it's still got that bronze aspect. So in order to capture this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a small dry brush and a pot of iron hand steel. And we're gonna grab a little bit of it on our brush, and then we're just gonna stipple this into the tissue paper until we get the effect that we want, which is quite a light, like that sort of thing. And then we're just gonna do this exact same method here. So we're just gonna start stippling this iron hand steel all over the central tabard. And you only wanna do this on the tabard. You don't wanna do this anywhere else. Like this. Just capturing that slightly bronzed, but very worn out look that we get on the box art. It's very, very simple, very easy to do. <laughs> and we just wanna replicate the same thing on the back. Just brace it a little bit with your finger if you have to, because it is a bit spindly. And just to finish off that central tabard, what we want to do is we just want to take a small amount of storm host silver and we just want to hit the sharpest edges on this. Just to kind of add a little bit of solidity to the edge of the tabard. And with that tabard all nice and finished, what we're going to do is we're going to use some Canoptec alloy and this is to highlight all of the brass armor. And with all that canoptic alloy applied, it's now time to highlight the silver. And we're gonna be using some thinned down iron hand steel for this. Now we are gonna highlight all the silver, but we're also gonna use this color to highlight all of the industrial black details that we originally painted with the black Templar. So that includes areas like those rivets, not rivets, joints. Like this. Just want to go around highlighting all of the silver and all of the industrial black. I'm just going to leave the clean black for now. We don't want to highlight that with iron hand steel, as it'll look really weird. 
And with all that iron hand steel applied, well, the metallics are now finished. And as you can see, the model is looking, well, he's looking very nearly finished. Now, what we've got to do left is we've got the cables, we've got the energy, we've got the glowing bits, and of course, we've got the large sword blade. So, the first bit that we're going to work for work on is the large sword blade. And also, this little syringe thing here that we've got on the gun. Now, the colour we're going to be using for this is Warp Lightning. And the first thing we're going to do is just on that little syringe type thing, we're just going to fill in the central reservation on both sides of that little detail like that with the Warp Lightning. Same again down here. like that, add a teeny tiny little bit more, just to really strengthen up that green on this side like that. And then on the large saw blade, what we want to do is we want to take a fair amount of this on our brush and we want to pick an area to start with and I'm going to start down here on this quadrant and now the blade is helpfully divided into sections because of those recesses and this helps us immensely when applying the contrast paint because what we want to do is we want to start at the recess here make contact with the model and then in large big broad brush strokes just pull that warp lightning like this always starting from the recess and once that warp lightning is dry you can see we've got a lovely smooth coat of warp lightning on the blade so what we want to do now is we want to pick out our three areas that we're going to do are slightly darker shading on and those are going to be this top corner here this section here and this bottom corner here same on the side this section here here and here and what we're going to do is we're going to once again just use some warp lightning green not very much and that's just to basically to draw out the section that we're going to do it do it on so in this bottom right corner we want to kind of go you want to kind of find where that central reservation is so it's there around there, and we just want to pick where we want to start. So round about here, halfway down the blade, and we just want to paint this warp lightning all over this area like this. Similarly around here, I'm going to pick about halfway up the blade up there and just get it covered all around where we're going to do the darker what, the shading, shading. And next up with that warp lightning shading applied, what we want to do is we want to take some orc flesh. Don't want very much on your brush at all with this bit. And you just want to effectively over about two thirds of what we've just done. You want to do like a one single brush stroke down it so it's kind of starting around about here just gonna make contact and pull it down like that similarly again over here about two thirds of the way up make contact and put it down. And we want to stop about two thirds of the way down. Just want to smooth out any of those dark blobs that are prone to appear. And same again up here. And once that orc flesh is dry, we're going to create a roughly four to one mix of contrast medium and Dark Angel's Green. What we want to do is we want to take a little bit of this on our brush, not very much at all, and basically just want to add shading to the central parts of these areas that we've already added. It's perhaps a little bit too much Dark Angel's Green there. So what we want to do is down here, we just want to very gently add this Dark Angel's Green like this. all over this section 
and all over this section. Like this, and in here as well. Like that. And then what you can do is just straight from the pot, grab a small amount of contrast medium. And then just you can use this where the kind of colours meet to just kind of wash that colour out a little bit more. Depending on your taste. Like that. And with that Dark Angels green applied, you can see we've got some really lovely shading going on across the blade. Now what we're going to do is we want to take a small amount of also in grey. And we want to highlight all of these edges on the blade. It's a good idea to just thin this also in grey down a little bit more than you normally would. And that way you can kind of build up the highlight depending on how you want it. So like if you want it to be really stark, you just do a couple of couple of goes over it. Whereas if you want it to be a little bit more subtle, just go with one. That's sort of the beauty of having it down thin down a little bit more will do for you. And next up, just before we finish off the blade, we're going to grab some thinned down Corax white. And we're going to paint this all over the bits that we want to be glowing green. So this is areas like the little orb on his tummy down here. His eyes kind of the tubes that we've left on the gun so like here and here and in here we also want to do is I think I've said his eyes but we're gonna do his eyes <laughs> we want to do the orb you can just about see there on his gauntlet and the two on his legs the one up here there's a lot so basically just any of these orbs we want to color in with this Corax white. And with that Corax white applied to all those glowy green areas, we're now ready to basically finish off all of that green. So what we're going to do is we're going to use some Tesseract Glow. We're going to use it in two different ways. The first way is we're going to take a small amount of the Tesseract Glow and we're just going to go over our edge highlights that we did on the blade with the Tesseract Glow. And this just makes all of those edges really kind of pop and glow for us. Like so. It doesn't really matter as well with the Tesseract Glow. If you get a little bit of it all over the blade itself. You don't want to get loads because you'll really kind of change the change the way it looks if you if you just kind of do a huge kind of layer all over it. Um, and we don't really want that because we've put a lot of work into this blade. But we do just want to make sure that we get this Tesseract Glow all over these edges. Like so. In addition, for all of the glowing green details, what we want to do is we want to get a complete coat of this all over. So like on all these orbs, we just want to make contact with the model with our brush and just kind of pull the Tesseract Glow until we've got the entire of that orb covered. We also want to work it into all of the recesses surrounding each of these orbs to really reinforce that kind of object source lighting or OSL type vibe that we're trying to achieve like that. So you want to go over all of these green detail, details like this and then we'll come back. And with all that Tesseract glow applied what we want to do is we're going to take some Dark Angels green and we want to colour this all over all of the smooth cables that we've left. Just want to get a good even coating of this 
Dark Angel's green all over these areas, like this. And with that Dark Angel's applied, what we're going to do is we're going to use some Black Templar to do two things. One, we're going to paint in the casing of this syringe type thing up here. And we want to do this by just painting in the flat of the panel and leaving the edge in the dark recess like that. Additionally, what we want to do is we want to take some black Templar on each of these cables. We basically want to paint it along both sides leaving a strip of green going down the middle of each one. So it'll be a really subtly dark green cable, but it'll really work with all the various different types of greens we've got going on here. And lastly, all that remains to do is to add a spot highlight of Fenrisian Grey to all the soft black. So what we want to do is just all those bits that we originally painted with Pterodon Turquoise and then did the Black Templar over. So just want to use add a small tiny little bit of Fenrisian Grey to all the sharpest corners of these details. to finish it off. And there you have it with that Ben Rizian Grey applied to the smooth black details. The Scorpec Lord, Destroyer Lord or Scorpec Lord, whatever you want to call him, is now finished. Um, all that's left to do is his base. Now I'm going to be basing him in the same colour scheme as I've done the Necron Warriors from this series and also Illuminor Zeras. So I'm not going to cover it again in this video, but if you'd like to see how I do it, you can go back and watch one of those videos. And there we have it, one Scorpec Lord all finished, ready to lead the crazy cults of the Destroyers into battle to end all organic life in the galaxy. What it's yeah. What's amazing about this model is it was in a starter set. I just let that sink in. This was a push fit model. It's just, it blows my mind. This Indomitus set is, is crazy. I, I love it. Oh, what a great model. And, well... I hope you love it too. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to support me further, like these legends on the screen, you can do so. Head to patreon.com forward slash warhipster or head to ko-fi.com forward slash warhipster. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Do all of that good stuff. And if you want to be kept up to date, make sure to click the bell icon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.